Hello everyone. Today we are going to elaborate on doing a structural analysis on beam structures. First, let's consider just a one simple beam, like what we have in here. And uh, do not forget to put your um, rhino on meters, and that's by right-clicking on meters, going to unit settings, and uh, in here you can have the model and the inputs for units. So please put it on meters. Now we have our uh, one curve and we can define it as a curve inside our grasshopper by right clicking and putting set one curve. Then uh, we are going to define this curve as a beam. So that's by going to the Caramba tab and in the model we have done a line to beam. Now we define this uh, line as the line input. The next thing is to go to the model and go to the assemble model so that we know which uh, items we need to define for this assemble model. First is the element which we can define by using this uh, component uh, of line to beam. We can also connect a panel to see the result. As you see, uh, we don't have any supports yet, and we have not defined this load uh, and cross-section and material. So we need to define them. First is the supports, which we can go to the mod model and this support, Karamba. Then we can define which points are our supports, which uh, in here we can define these two endpoints. So that's by double-clicking on canvas and uh, typing uh, endpoints. It extracts this start and end point, and we can define these two points as the input for um, position of the supports. And uh, by clicking on all these uh, TX, TY, TZ, and uh, RX, you, we can uh, limit the, the rotations and transitions in X, Y, and Z direction. Next is the load, which we can go to the load, Karamba and define this gravity load. We can define the cross section by going to this cross section part. And we can define from the uh, default cross section that is inside it, for example, the eye cross section or this box. Next, we can define the material, which, I'm, which uh, is by going to the material tab material selection and we can define for example seal now this part has created our model now our assemble model is ready then we can go to the analysis we can go to the algorithm analyze and connect the output of the model to this analyze and also we can connect the panel to it to see the displacement which is in centimeters next is showing the outputs or results just by going to the results tab we can use model view and connect the model output to this model view now we can see a scale model a scale deformation which then we can change this scale we can also change to see what other things, for example, loads, uh, which is now in here. We can see it or we can hide it. Also, we can hide these supports or we can just scale them. And the next part is the beam view. And we, should, we can also find it inside the results and by connecting it we can see the different parts and this is the scale model of the scale deformed model so this is based on this deformation that should be defined for it and we can go to axial stress to see the axial stresses of this beam or the displacements Then we can also change the uh, load value and also 
the cross section. For example, in here, the cross section has a height of 10. Let's put it on 3. And the lower and upper width is now on 5. We can define it to be like 12. And the model is updated based on these new, new inputs. Then we can also scale the first curve that we created and the model is updated based on these changes. We can also connect the legend to the output uh, by connecting C to the C value and T to the T value and it shows the amount of stress or also the displacements based on the colors. So this was the simple beam. Now we can elaborate on it by connecting another curve to it. Let's say now we have these two curves. I can copy this part to have them separately. So this was just for one curve, one beam. I can type it in here. One beam. And next we want to have two beams with an intersection together at the corner. Okay, again we can define, uh, set multiple curves and define these two curves as the inputs. Now uh, we have the line to beam component, we have the endpoints, and we have to, and we define them as supports. But in here, because uh, we have four points, as we see in here, two start points and two end points, but we want three of them, because two of them are uh, completely on top of each other, uh, we can use a, uh, duplicate points by typing du points, remove duplicate points, flattening the data, from the input data, and then we can see that we have three outputs. Now the error is solved. And we have our line to beam, so we have the elements, the supports, uh, again the loads as it was before, then we can also change it, for example, putting a Z vector and defining a value for it, for example, from 1 to 12. And we have the cross section and material selected as it was before, we can also change it to something like wood. Now we can see the displacement and also we can show the results. Uh, now in here you can see that the beams are going upward because the uh, direction of the vector is uh, in the z direction. If we want it to work as a gravity load, we should put it on minus x so that the load direction is different. Now we can also put the beam view on so that we can see the result of the structure. We can also hide the curves in Rhino and also in Grasshopper. You can see that this part they are connected together and the load uh, we can also increase the load to see how it affects the structure. Also, this deformation scale does the same. Next, uh, we can have two curves that have intersection in the middle. Let's say this is the first curve and this is the next one. So, let's copy again this part. Hide this part. And in here, I'm going to set multiple curves and select these two curves as the inputs.
One thing that is uh, visible in here is that uh, these two curves, they are not these two beams, they are not connected in the middle, so they are acting separately. And the reason is that uh, the caramba doesn't understand that if two curves have intersections, they should define it as uh, joints. So it acts, uh, it considers them uh, separately without any connection. And we can change the code so that it works uh, as we want it to be, which is uh, having the connection in this part. We need to split our curves so that we have different uh, parts and they work as different beams. So we need to add something in here. And that's uh, by going to this intersection and we have this curve-curve intersection. We can define uh, these two curves. So let's use a list item and extract these two curves separately. We can define these uh, A and B curves. Next, uh, let's also hide this part so that we can know which step we are in. We want to split these curves based on this point. Uh, and that's by using a shatter. We can type shatter or we can also find it inside our curve in the division. We can use this curve, the list item first in, uh, in output, and this uh, t value which shows which uh, t value was for this point on this curve. So by selecting this, I can have these separate parts for the first curve. And I can use the same method for the second one, which is using the uh, second index and also the second T value. Now I have these two outputs and these are my new uh, lines. Then I can use a merge component to combine these two curves together and then connecting the output to the line to beam component. For the supports, uh, we have used the supports that uh, was in the previous code, so it's not uh, important. We can just define these points as the supports. And now let's see the results. Now, as you see, they are connected in the middle and the deformation is changing. While this is working, we can also in decrease the, the displacement and also making the structure more stable by considering the middle point as another uh, support. And for that, we can use the output of this line to pin component and using this point output as the input for the supports. Now you can see that uh, the deformation is less and also the displacement is becoming reduced. So now it's also sticked in here. And the structural uh, performance is different. Now we can expand what we learned in here in a row of uh, in a row of beams. So let's hide this part and consider that we have a uh, curve and we want to consider some uh, lines between these two curves in here and having a row of beams. For this, we can start with uh, bringing this curve into our grasshopper by setting one curve then we can explode it to extract the these two curves and that's by using a list item and having the index of first input and this one so I'm going to connect a curve to I and 2. 
Let's hide all other parts and also hide it inside our Rhino. Now we can uh, divide these two curves using divide curve and using a number for the division, for example, 6. Using the same number for both of the curves. And now we can use a line component, this one, to create line between these two curves. As you see, the order of the lines is different, and we need to align one of them. So let's flip curve, use flip curve for one of the curves, and connect it to the divide curve. Now we have these straight beams that we can use as the beam input uh, for the assemble model. So let's use line to beam component, like what we did before, and connect these lines to the line input. But uh, we also need these parts to and define them as the beams. That, for having that, we can use the same method that we did for the previous example, which is by using a shatter. So I'm going to type shatter and use this flipped curve with this T value and also use this other curve with this T value. Now we have the segments of these two curves and we can also define them as the line to beam component. So we have our lines. Next we want to define the supports. But, but before that, let's type assemble model so that we can see what other things we need to define. So we go to the sub Karamba tab and this model support and uh, we can define these points that we had in here or we can also define these points, no difference. So I'm using these points and fixing them in rotations and transitions in X, Y, Z. Next, I can define the load by going to the load tab using a Z vector and putting the expression on minus X to change the direction. And the value, let's start with 1 and put it on 12. This is the load. Next, we need the cross section, which is like what we did before. Let's put it on this I section or also the box. And the material, we can go to the material selection using wood or other materials that you prefer. Now we have the assembled model. So this part was for assembling our model and these were our inputs. Next uh, we can do an analysis. And we can see the displacement in centimeters. Now using a model view like what we did before. We can see the, the deformed uh, structure. Also using a beam view, we can see the result with the cross section and also the displacements and axial stress. Now you see that by increasing this load, again we can see the result with a more deformed uh, output. So I'm using another tag in here, putting a row of beams. As you know, I upload all these codes on Food for Rhino and you can download the definitions if you need to check them with yours. Next, we want to have a grid of beams. 
and uh, that uh, we can use uh, the method that we used in the other video tutorial that uh, I uploaded before so let's hide all these parts and we can draw a rectangle inside Rhino and bring it to the grasshopper by setting one curve now we can use a boundary surface to create a surface and then using a mesh mesh surface to create a mesh out of this surface now we can uh, get the uh, extract these edges by using a mesh edge and connecting a curve to the output of E1 and E2 next we can define these curves as the line to beam component again we can use the assemble model and define these elements as the elements of our model then we have the supports and for that we can define uh, naked vertices and use the naked points of our mesh we can define these points as the supports but uh, we need to have a support and fixing all the rotations and transitions next we can define the load it's uh, the same like what we had before but now let's just work with the gravity and not changing the data the cross section again we can use from the families that is available let's work with ice section and the material again on wood now we can use uh, an analyze and using a panel to see the displacements and then we can use the model view and the beam view then we can also change the cross section to see the changes we can also change this uh, grid to other types by changing this mesh let's say we want to use a triangulated mesh so that's by using a 3D mesh we can define the target edge length and define this triangulated mesh as what was connected to this mesh edge so I can connect this one to these two inputs and now you can see that we have a triangular grid we can see the change in the displacement also let's work with other cross sections to see the differences We can also add to these uh, um, supports because now the supports are all on the edges but we can also use other points for example from these clothed points as uh, in interior supports we can also use a 
list item to select from these points for example now this point is selected we can also um, use a panel and type the indexes that we want to use as the supports for example 0, 2, 5, 8 putting multiple data and using this as another par part of the supports we can use the same and, and connecting this or we could also uh, copy this uh, support component and for here we can uh, make it flexible for rotations but uh, closing the transitions so now I can uh, use these two supports for the assemble model and now you can see that the structure is working differently let's add to the load so that the deformations are more visible now we can see that how it works we can also don't use this minus x so that it works uh, as a form finding for us we can see the uh, three-dimensional form of our structure Let's also put it on just cross section or displacements to see how it works. So this is for uh, today and in the next videos we are going to work uh, with other methods for form finding of beam structures. Thank you.